First of all, Jack, good to see you. Massive shunt, of course, in that second race in Russia. But it was a good weekend for you. We'll get onto that in a minute. But first of all, can we just get your your perspective on that accident with Luca Giotto? Sure, yeah. Thanks, Peter. Um, it was um, well only a few laps into the race. We, we'd had the VSC. Everything was still fairly bunched up. Uh, Luca went down the inside into turn two. Uh, but I got a cut back on him coming out of um, out of two into turn three I was on the inside pulling slightly ahead and um, I just felt a small touch at the rear and still not sure exactly whether it was puncture or if it was um, something on the suspension that failed um, but either way my car went onto the floor um, and I, I lost all steering as you do in that situation and just uh, unfortunately collected Luca and we, we both went into the wall at quite high speed. Yeah, the data showing that the initial contact was at about 230 kilometers an hour, so really quick. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a seriously fast corner um, and it's also one where we do see a fair bit of racing. Um, so yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that it happened at such a high speed. But um, that's, that's part of the game, I guess. Um, certainly, before I went into the barrier, I was thinking <clears throat> this, this is going to be quite a big one. So, yeah. I'm interested to hear you say that it was either a sudden puncture or possibly suspension damage. That's presumably evidence that's come up since, since the accident, because initially you thought it was a puncture. Well, it's just we, we do have uh, tyre pressure monitoring systems on the car. And there's nothing, although they're not always 100% reliable, um, there's nothing to suggest that they lost pressure before I hit Luca that, um, the second time and the, the tyre was blown off the rim. And there's a few camera angles which I've looked at as well where you can see from the back of the car there's a lot of smoke coming up from the floor where I'm touching the track. Um, but the the tyre does still look relatively intact. So... That's led me to think maybe um, it, it could just be an unfortunate angle or because the right side of the car is so loaded at that point uh, in that corner, just a small touch from, from Luca would have been enough to, to snap something on the, on the rear corner and then you lose the ride height and, um, and that could be it. So not exactly sure. I know Pirelli and the FIA always look into these things after the, um, the weekend, so they probably will have their conclusions, as I'm sure. So do you think the advent of the 18-inch wheel was in any way a factor in terms of potential sudden deflation? I'm not sure if the 18-inch... Sorry about that. I'm not sure if the 18-inch rim had anything to do with it, uh, just in the sense that the Pirellis have always been relatively uh, susceptible to sidewall impacts. Um, so we've seen it quite a few times now where uh, uh, just a touch from the front wing on the, the side wall of a tyre can be enough to rip it and you get an instant puncture. Um, but I, like I said, I'm not sure the 18-inch changed that from last year when we were on the 13-inch wheels. And that also makes me think again that it wasn't so probably wasn't a puncture. Um, maybe it was something on the suspension because it would have been more spectacular if we'd actually seen a puncture. Uh, in general, and you've had, obviously, I would guess you've had some wheel banging incidents before this. What's the Delara car like when you are in physical combat with other drivers? I've had side to side impacts where nothing's happened. I've not even had anything uh, bend on the steering or anything go out of true. Um, and equally, I've had very small touches at slightly different angles. Uh, where you can bend a track rod very easily. Um, so it's a mixed bag, as it is with most cars these days. It's no better or worse, I think, than, than most. Well, it's only a few days after the shunt. How do you feel right now? A little bit sore. Definitely um, the adrenaline carries you through quite a way. I got checked over at the medical centre, as did Luca. Um, at the time, they, they didn't pick up on anything, nothing broken. Um, but, you know, neck took quite a bit of a hit there. Um, the hands did its job and luckily I didn't have any major injuries but definitely a bit of whiplash and um, to my, my ribs on the right hand side because I went a, a bit more sideways in than Luca um, but yeah luckily nothing major. Did you take your hands off the wheel at the moment of impact? Oh yeah definitely. <laughs> I still had um, my right hand got a proper whack against the tub so that was actually my 
my biggest complaint afterwards. <laughs> Jack, tell us about your feel for the new owners at Williams, your third driver at Williams. Uh, I've, I've had a meet, meeting with um, the new owners briefly in Mugello, which was uh, really good. And they seem very committed to investing in the team and pushing the team forwards on the grid um, whilst keeping that, that brand and the heritage of um, the Williams family name, which is great to see. For me, the, nothing's changed for the moment. I'm going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to be traveling to some of the, these races coming up where F2 is not racing, uh, acting as a support and reserve role, going to be doing my work in the simulator and none of that's going to, going to change. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens for next year. But I think um, this is uh, overall, it's a, a very positive situation for Williams moving forwards. Well, Jack, good luck with all of that. And particularly for those last two rounds in Bahrain. Thanks for talking. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Peter.